Welcome everyone to today's town hall. Just gonna give folks a couple of minutes to log in. Welcome everyone. My name is Magdalia Gomez. I'm the AVP of Community Engagement here at the Harvard University Employees Credit Union. And I'm excited to welcome you to our summer town hall. I know for those of you that are in the Boston area, it has been very hot. And I know it's also summertime. So we really appreciate you taking the time to join us and not only just join us, but also submit questions to Craig. And during today's town hall, I'm pretty sure most of you are probably comfortable and familiar with Zoom, but I wanna make sure we're all have the same knowledge base. So the format for today's presentation is we took the questions that you submitted them and those are the ones we're going to ask Craig. However, if you have any additional questions, just use the Q&A feature to let us know. And to make sure that it's working, that you know where to find it, please use the Q&A feature to let us know how long have you been a member and where are you joining us from? So for example, you can say Cambridge, six years or however long. We always are curious who's joining from the furthest and who has been a member for the longest. Okay. So let us know using the Q&A feature. We have disabled chat. It's just a little bit easier to monitor Q&A than it is to Q&A in chat. So hope folks can find that. Okay, I like this one. Uh, one person said that they don't remember how long they've been a member. So that I'm guessing it's a long time. Uh, they're joining from California. So I think you're winning right now. You're the one that's furthest away. Then we have some folks from Boston. Ooh, Switzerland. We have someone from Switzerland. So you okay. are winning. Which is the one that's in the lead. Yeah, Switzerland, uh, 15 years. And then someone from Virginia who has been a member since 2000. Thank you so much, everyone. Just like you let us know where you're joining us from and how long you have been a member. This is the same way you can submit additional questions or comments to Craig. Um, in addition, we also have Ton Montilli, who's our chief experience officer, who also will be helping me monitor questions and answers. Okay, Brookline for about 30 years. Oh, someone that graduated from in 1994 and they're joining from California. Great. Awesome, wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. We are also going to record today's presentation and make it available on our YouTube channel. I hope you are already following us on YouTube. If not, it's youtube.com slash myhvcu. You'll be able to see this town hall and many others in addition to all of our personal finance presentations. So if you aren't already, please subscribe and ring that bell for notifications. So now it is my honor to introduce Craig, our president and CEO. And Craig, I'm gonna turn it over to you for today's town hall. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Magdalia. So I wanted to start first and thank you for uh, for participating today. And as Magdalia stated, it's, it's it's a warm day here in the Cambridge market. So uh, so we're glad that you're uh, maybe escaping the heat for for the next 30 minutes with us. Uh, but wanted to just bring you up to speed on how we're doing uh, financially as an organization. Uh, I can't believe it's August already. We just closed our books here in July. Um, we are uh, we're still growing rapidly as an organization. We'll probably grow the the asset size of the organization somewhere between. Uh, nine and eleven percent this year. Uh, we're approaching that one point one billion dollars in asset size uh, as an organization, which puts us uh, roughly in that that twelfth spot for the largest credit unions here in Massachusetts. Uh, something we're really proud of is the growth that we've experienced uh, over the last five years, in particular. Um, when you look a little bit into our our financials, one thing that we've experienced through the first seven months of this year is really strong loan growth. Um, it's different than what we've experienced over the last couple of years. The last couple of years, uh, we really had inflows of, of, of mortgage refinance activity. Uh, and that was not unlike most of the industry uh, with the rates being so low. As rates have started to tick up, um, that refinance activity has really evaporated. Uh, again, not just for us, but uh, as an industry as a whole. But what we've seen is we've seen um, a lot of our, our members take advantage of other lending products that we have out there. Uh, for example, people tapping into the existing equity of their homes in the form of home equity lines of credit. Um, you know, a lot of our members still have those home projects that they're looking to accomplish. So that's a great vehicle. And we're seeing a lot of people utilize that, uh, that uh, loan product. We're also seeing a lot of people take advantage of our personal loans. We've been very aggressive in our rates this year uh, with that product line. And we're seeing a lot of members take advantage of it. So great growth on the loan side of the balance sheet. I'm still seeing um, really good 
uh, deposit inflows as well. Um, from an earnings standpoint, um, we're right where we thought we were going to be from a from a budget standpoint. Um, actually, slightly ahead, which is always which is always great to say. Um, so uh, overall, earnings continue to be strong. Um, you know, the organization continues to be uh, to have to have a very strong capital base. We went through a examination uh, earlier this year, which happens regularly. Uh, from the banking division, um, and we just got outstanding reviews. So from an institution standpoint, it continues to be a very safe and sound organization. So that's my quick recap of our financial position. Thank you, Craig. I always appreciate hearing the financial recaps. You do such a great job of helping us. You know, it's simple, easy for us to understand uh, so that those of us that don't have a finance degree can keep track of how we're doing as a credit union. So we did have the first question come in about sort of financials, if you will, and there, someone asked, due to the current environment, will HUCU be increasing savings rates? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when we started to um, increase some of our rates, uh, particularly around our, our, our CDs, um, probably two months ago, we we had a uh, we had two special terms out there for a number of years, our 11 and our 15 month term. Uh, we started to increase those, um, uh, which were higher in the marketplace. Um, and then with the last increase that the Fed did here in July, we um, we increased all of our CD rates uh, fairly aggressively. Um, the 11 month and the 15 month uh, term certificates that I just mentioned a, a minute ago, uh, we got more aggressive with those rates. And what we do is we survey our um, our local marketplace um, every week to see what the competition is doing. And, um, and as an organization, we're always trying to be in that either one or two spot uh, in terms of rates that we can provide back to our membership. We, uh, it's, it's really important to us from a uh, organization and from the board's perspective to make sure we're constantly returning value back to the membership. Uh, and one way we do that in the, is in the form of higher CD rates uh, or saving rates a, as a whole. Um, you would expect that as the Fed continues to move rates further and there's all indications that they will, we'll continue to move our rates uh, on savings higher as well. Next question from a member was, does HUCU offer home improvement loans? We don't have necessarily a specific product called a home improvement loan. We did years ago, but to be honest with you, it wasn't fantastic. Um, many of our borrowers have um, taken advantage of the equity in their home. I had mentioned this just you know um, when we were talking about the financials, um, in the form of taking out uh, home equity lines of credit or fixed um, home equity loans. Those have been very popular over the last two years in particular, as interest rates have started to, to, to move up. Um, we've seen that, you know, uh, refinance activity really plunge because, you know, a lot of people took advantage of that, that refinance craze. They've got great rates now on, on, on their first mortgages um, at, at historical lows, but they still want to do those home improvement projects. Um, and so what they've done is they've tapped into that equity in their, in their homes. And they've done that predominantly through home equity lines of credit and fixed home equity loans. Um, you know, for those smaller projects that people are trying to accomplish, we've even seen people take advantage of a, of a short-term personal loan to do some of those projects. Um, we recognize this um, and what we've done, um, I think starting actually last year, but continue to do so is we offer a very aggressive um, introductory rate excuse me, for our for our, uh, home equity uh, loan. We fix it for the first 12 months um, of the term. That rate today is, I think, 2.99%. Um, when you compare that to a lot of other lenders out there, most of them tend to be priced closer to uh, what prime is. And prime is right around 5.5% these days. So we, we give a nice introductory rate for that first 12 months um, as a way for you to kind of get those projects uh, well underway at a very reasonable cost. Speaking to our mortgage questions, uh, does HUCU offer international mortgages? 
Unfortunately, we don't. Um, you know, for for years and years and years, um, we offered mortgages within a hundred mile radius from where I am here today in Cambridge, um, and that was because state statute limited us in terms of how far we could lend. About a year or so ago, that restriction was eliminated, and once that was once that restriction went away, um, it allowed us to um, expand our our uh, geographic footprint. And we've done that. Today, we uh, we offer mortgages throughout all of New England. Um, we're continuing to look and add uh, additional states um, that we can offer mortgages to. Um, but unfortunately, that's still here domestically in the United States, uh, not abroad. Um, and unfortunately, too, I don't see that on our roadmap. Unfortunately, we won't have international mortgages. I guess we can't plan a business trip to go visit our member our over in Switzerland. Switzerland. I know, <laughs> I know. It's not on a roadmap today. Maybe sometime in the future. Maybe I should have said it that way. Another question that came in, why has the wait time been so long when calling HVCU? Yeah, for, first on this one, I want to apologize because um, one, we recognize it. Um, and, and we've heard this from a number of members that the the wait has been longer than what we um, we would expect, and what certainly we're we're striving for as an organization. Um, and to be completely transparent, one of the things that we've been impacted as an organization isn't that unlike so many other companies, which has been around um, staffing. Um, we've had some issues around staffing early this year. You know, I'm not sure. You know, um, what it's like. Uh, I know there were some people uh, calling in from California, but certainly in this local marketplace, it, it doesn't matter like where you drive around, you see um, hiring signs everywhere. Um, and, and certainly, you know, if you, you know, uh, pick up any articles, you'll, you'll see so many articles around um, people looking for jobs. And, uh, and so we've been impacted that as an organization, our support center who does just a tremendous job, they've been understaffed over the last couple of months, and that has resulted in um, longer calling times. I am happy to say that we are now back at full capacity. We've brought on some really talented folks to the organization over the last few weeks in particular. They are going through their training right now. Um, so within the next couple of weeks, they'll be trained in all the products and services that, that we offer um, and we'll be able to serve you. So we expect those, uh, those, those weights to, to go away. The other thing that we will be rolling out over the next uh, couple of weeks um, as another way in which you can connect with us is live chat. And so we're really excited about that. So um, whether you want to call in and, and talk to someone um, over the phone or you want to use a live chat feature, um, that'll be those those will be some um, options for you uh, very shortly. I am excited for the live chat. I, yeah, I know about too. some people, but I'd rather chat than call in. I don't know. Sometimes it's you just find it easier for my personality. So I think that'll be really nice for our members. I agree. Sometimes I'll do a live chat and I'll be doing something else. So it allows me to do a couple of things at the same time. Yeah. Next question was regarding why did HBCU get rid of call 24? Yeah, call 24 was a solution that most institutions used years and years ago. And um, it was extremely popular years ago with our membership. Uh, but what happened over time as, as um, digital banking became uh, much more popular uh, through, through online banking or through, uh, through the use of, of mobile technology, the usage of Call24, not just for our organization, uh, but through all organizations, um, dropped considerably. Um, uh, anything that you could have done using the Call24 solution years ago um, can now be done um, online or through, uh, in most cases, through, through your mobile device. Um, when we converted to our online platform back in 2019, um, that technology couldn't even integrate with the new up-to-date online bank platforms that were available um, at that point. So uh, as a result, because of lower usage, and, and the technology not be, being able to integrate effectively, uh, we had to sunset that, that, that solution for our membership. If you 
had used it and there is uh, aspects that you are trying to um, uh, get, uh, I would suggest that you uh, reach out to our support center. Um, I'm sure what they can do is help you get that information through our online banking channels. I love this question, just straight to the point. What yeah. is going on with the Longwood branch? Yeah. Okay. So let me give you a little bit of the backstory first. So we've been over in the Longwood area for decades, okay, in the School of Public Health. Uh, when the um, when the pandemic happened, that facility closed. And as a result, uh, our members could not um, access that, that building any longer. Um, we had every intention to um, open up. We had many conversations with the folks over at the School of Public uh, Health because we've heard it from our membership. You know, when are you going to open? When are you going to open? Um, we had a meeting with them and, um, and the School of Public Health was going into a different direction with their space over there. And so they had, uh, they had a different plan. Unfortunately, it did not include us. So, um, so we had to find um, a new location. Um, and um, even before that, we as an organization felt that that space alone was not gonna be enough to service the Longwood area. So we had um, on our roadmap looking at more of a, I'll say a standalone space that wasn't within an existing structure like the School of Public Health. Um, I'm so pleased to, to announce that we have found a location. We've made a few announcements of, of this. It's, uh, it's located at 435 Brookline Ave. So at the, you know, at the end of Longwood, right there almost on the corner, uh, right uh, adjacent to uh, Jocelyn Diabetes Center. It's a storefront um, level uh, building, um, accessible, um, you know, 24 hours a day, you can ex uh, you'll be able to access uh, an, an ATM that will be that we'll have there, and uh, and we're really excited about that. We are um, we're planning to open that facility likely in October. Uh, the the site is being renovated right now. It actually used to be a Citizens Branch location. They vacated that space um, a little uh, a little while ago, and we were happy enough to take it over. It's a little larger facility than what we had over at the School of Public Health as well. So we can offer some more services that we weren't able to offer there. So um, in addition to the normal uh, retail services that we provide, uh, we plan on having uh, a mortgage loan officer who will be on site. Um, and another service, and I'll be talking about it in a few, uh, a few minutes, um, is around investment services. So we think that we'll have an investment advisor um, occasionally on site to help our membership as well. So we're really excited about this one. And again, looking for about an October uh, opening. I was there on Tuesday with a couple of other folks and just looking at the space, it is, I am very excited to be for us to be in that location. I think our members will really appreciate how accessible we're going to be. And I think I'm excited to see it fully renovated in a couple of months, but it's a yeah. great, great space. Yeah. Great visibility, right? Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. And a lot of good food options for those that are around. That's right. <laughs> Yep. Grab your lunch and come in and see us. Yes. And this actually, this question was submitted by someone when they register and I, and they actually submitted it. Uh, they're on the webinar currently and they submitted it again. So their question was, why does HBCU not have a SWIFT account? Sorry, a SWIFT code. Yep. So um, the majority of U.S. credit unions and banks, smaller banks in particular, don't have SWIFT codes. Um, it's not nearly as predominant here in the United States as it is in Europe. And SWIFT codes are more aligned for international transactions. Um, and then because there's so many countries over in Europe, that's why you see the predominance of SWIFT over, over, uh, over there versus here in the United States. Um, it doesn't mean that you can't transacts or transfer funds from an international account here uh, into the United States. Um, I know that when you are trying to do so, 
many of your, your probably international banks are asking what that United States SWIFT code is. You do see it generally with the larger um, U.S. banks, you know, Bank of America, Chase, uh, because they have such a large international um, uh, business portfolio that they really require that. But for institutions of our size, it's, it's incredibly uncommon. Uh, for institutions to have to have a SWIFT code. Um, and I know, again, that can be somewhat problematic. One of the things that I would um, suggest, however, and we made this partnership um, recently, is, um, is with a company called um, WISE, you know, WISE.com. And we have them on our website under, under wires. Uh, it is an option for doing a domestic wire. It gives you an option for an international wire. Um, but then there's this option for WISE. They're a fintech company out of London. Um, they're, they're very large in doing um, international remittance transfers. The thing that we liked about them was that they made the process easy. Uh, when you go through sometimes banks, particularly here in the United States, it still can be a complex process. Um, they're very transparent. Pricing is cheap. The speed is faster. Um, you know, once you set up that initial kind of um, uh, way to authenticate yourself, uh, you can save the transaction. So that second trans for or second transaction is that much easier. Um, I would suggest you give it a shot. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do right now um, on getting a SWIFT code, um, but you know, but check out Wise. I think you'll like that. Thank you, Craig. And this is our last question before we open it up for any additional questions that members may have. So if you do have an additional question, please use the Q&A feature to submit it to Craig now. And the last question that was submitted during registration is, what is HBCU's, HBCU's strategy for ESG investment and divesting from entities that contribute to climate change? Yeah, the, 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 the strategy really for the current even for years is that we want to take the majority of our assets and put them back in the form of loans to our membership. And we have been quite successful in doing that for almost the last decade. To give you an example, our balance sheet um, is composed of roughly 85% loans. Okay, so 85% of the money that we have, we give back in the form of mortgages, personal loans, student loans, credit card balances, those type of things. It's in the lending portfolio. And when you're putting 85% of your assets into that part of your balance sheet, um, it means that our investment portfolio as, as a whole represents a relatively small percent of, of our entire balance sheet. It represents roughly about 10% these days. And it hasn't deviated that much over the last couple of years, to be honest with you. Um, we look at our investment portfolio and some of it is because we're a regulated body. It restricts what we can invest in. Um, we typically invest in um, very safe and secure uh, investments to begin with. So the, 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 the composition of our investment portfolio is made up of US treasuries. Uh, so they're fully backed by the US government. There's no credit risk. We also invest in U.S. government agencies that that have the the, the uh, essential guarantee of the United States. So we don't take credit risk in our in our investment portfolio. Um, we don't invest in any type of other investments that open us up to anything that might contribute to climate change or any other investments that that do that. Um, should our um, balance sheet balance sheet change materially um, in the years to come. We certainly um, are, a, a, are a, a socially conscious organization um, and would be mindful of those type of investments as we go forward. But today, we don't have anything like that on our balance sheet. Thank you, Craig. And then the next part is really turning it over to you to hear more about upcoming initiatives. Yeah, so that there's a couple things that you know, if you've participated in these town halls in the past, I've, I've kind of told you about a few things that we've been working on. Um, two that I want to just bring you up to date are regarding um, offering uh, insurance products to our membership so and investment services. So let's hit the insurance uh, initiative first. Um, insurance would allow 
us to offer you um, um, insurance on on home on your home um, on your auto um, renters insurance um, life insurance um, and what we can do through this program is we can get um, really the power of being within a, a large group so we can get better pricing for you. So we, our goal is to provide these type of products where we feel that we can provide um, savings, you know, give you, a, give you a really competitive product for you to evaluate. Um, that will uh, take shape later uh, here in 2022. Um, we recently picked a partner that we're going with. We're, we're in the implementation phase now um, and the rollout to our membership is likely to happen, like I said, uh, at the very end of this year. The other product that we're, or service that we're really excited about, and this is one that members have been asking about, uh, frankly, for years, is, you know, can you offer investment services to the membership? And we're at the stage now that, yes, we can. Um, we, um, we've narrowed down um, this search down to two vendors. Um, I actually have a meeting with, uh, with our board of directors uh, in two weeks, which will be making the recommendation. The board is in full agreement that this is a necessary service to provide to our members. Um, once that vendor is selected, um, we'll start the implementation right away. And I would expect that this to, to start, you know, being in front of our membership uh, very early 2023. You know, it'll take us some time to make sure we um, hire the right advisors for you to make sure that they fit well within our organization and, and that they're able to provide really the best type of advice and service back to you as the membership. Uh, but this was something that, you know, definitely has been asked for, for a long, long time. And we're really happy that we're at the point now that we can provide that to our membership. So insurance and investment services um, will, will, will be rolled out um, the end of this year, beginning of 2023. Thank you so much, Craig. We have insurance, investing, a new brand, uh, definitely not a quiet time for us at no. the credit union. No, we like to stay busy. You know, we, we definitely like to stay busy. I don't see any additional questions at the moment, but I am going to do a quick you know, if there are questions, please submit them. Um, I am going to do a quick little recap to tell folks a little bit more about how they can continue to connect with us. As you heard from Craig, we hear what you're saying. We take those considerations. And, you know, we heard that you wanted insurance. We heard that you wanted investing. You wanted a better location at LMA. And we are working on those. So stay connected with us. You can email us. You can Follow us on social media channels. The recording for today's presentation will be on our YouTube channel, most likely by early next week, but you're welcome to follow us now and watch other recordings that we have. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Craig, for closing. Yeah, thanks again, Migdalia. And, and thanks everyone for joining today. Um, you know, as Migdalia stated in the very beginning, all these questions are from the membership, you know, and we really uh, appreciate you submitting your questions and they do help form you know, strategy for us. Uh, as Medallia said, the, the investment services, that's from feedback that we've received from the membership. You know, we talked about international remittances a little earlier. The WISE platform was from a, from an, a, a question or recommendation from the membership. So keep those questions coming in um, and we appreciate your membership. Uh, we appreciate um, everything that, 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 that you do to support us as an organization. Uh, and if you have any questions, um, again, we're a very transparent organization. Feel free to email me directly. It's, it's Craig underscore Leonard at harvard.edu. Um, tell me what we're doing well. Tell me what we need to do better at. You know, uh, I would love to hear from you. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer. And again, thanks for participating today.